Counting double digit thousand. <laughs>Hello YouTube, it is Toyd123 back again with the second part in this series in which I show you how to use Passive Crossover Designer by Jeff Bagby in order to create your own crossovers. In this particular section, we're going to teach you how to pick the drivers before we import them. Now that's very important because you don't want to just continue, although it can be fun, uh, you want to know which speakers will probably work well beforehand and you need to figure out where the minimum crossover point is for each speaker and that's what we're going to teach you today um, and these are going to be rules of thumb so we will talk about that as we go it does not mean that it is a hard and fast rule there are going to be some speakers in which um, these rules do not necessarily apply but they will give you a good starting point so let's um talk about uh, two-way and three-way systems. A two-way system is a system that uses a mid-range and a tweeter, and a three-way system is a system that uses a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. Uh, the reason why that's important um, is typically a three-way system will get you a little bit lower lows um, as they use the woofer to produce those lows, the mid-range to produce all your mid sound in the tweeter to produce the, the high frequencies. Um, the reason why it's important to know that is because in this program it's a little bit different. In a two-way you're always going to be loading a woofer and a tweeter, uh, which is different for most people that are used to building them because you're thinking I need to load a mid-range and a tweeter. Well, in this program you use woofer and tweeter. so. Keep that in mind. Uh, anytime you're going to import or create a two-way system, you're going to load these two, uh, and you will not load a mid-range. The only time you will ever load a mid-range in this particular system is if you're doing a three-way system. So for the majority of the time, you're going to ignore the mid-range, and right now we're going to ignore it because we're doing two-way systems. So let's go ahead and get on the internet and show you how and what speakers will work well together and how we determine them. So I'm going to go ahead and get on Parts Express website and I'm going to look at the spec sheets. So when you go on the website you can scroll down and you can click specifications. If it has one it will pull up these spec sheets. These are the same sheets that you get your um, FRD files from that we showed you in the first video which you will need to, to have. Um, let's show you what a good crossover point is on this PRV model, for example. Uh, you want to look at this spec sheet and you're going to take a look at the frequency range. Now, you're going to notice these decibels. It's going to say 90 decibels here, 100 decibels here, 110, and so on and so forth. What we're going to do is look for the peak of the speaker. Now, when you hit this peak, that is considered a cone breakup. Now, cone breakup is where the speaker really starts to distort. Now, how a crossover works, a crossover does not hard and fast cut off the speaker um, right at this frequency. So, you don't just all of a sudden cut it off. In fact, what it does is it creates a, a curve that curves down. And the higher the order crossover you, you go is the quicker or faster that, that curvature goes down. We're going to assume that uh, the majority of you are going to be using a second order crossover. Now, a second order crossover, what you want to do is look for this peak. Now you can tell that that is a lot higher than here and this is what you would consider cone breakup. So everything in this range right here is considered cone breakup. What we want to do is see exactly where that cone breakup is and if you take a look down here it says 1000, 2000, and 3000 and then this next line is 4000. So that's about 3,500 hertz on where that particular speaker cross. I'm sorry, speaker has the cone breakup. Now we want to cross over an octave below that. Now an octave below only means half. Okay, that's the easiest way to think about it. So if this is about 3,500, then we're going to need to cross this over about 1,750 um, hertz. 
So at 1750 is, is where our starting point should be. Okay. Now we can go below that if we want to. So 1750, we could do 500, we could do 700, we could do 1000. And in some cases, we may even need to do that. But we're going to at least say the highest frequency in which we should cross this speaker over to start with is 1750 hertz. Um, let me show you another woofer as well. Here's the Dayton Audio ND105-4 because some of these are not as easy to see. Um, but this is a really good one to look at because when you're looking at these speakers, you're going to want to look and see when it starts to dip. Because when it starts to dip, especially like this, uh, you're looking at, you know, you're at 80 here and you're at 85 here. You've just dropped five decibels. You definitely need to cross it over before then. In fact, uh, this would be probably the last point which you want to cross this speaker over, which is about 3,500. Um, again, um, really, you could probably go all the way down to 4,000. Uh, I, I mean, honestly, you could go up to 5,000, really, uh, five or 6,000 to cross this speaker over. And so you're going to need to cross this over by 3,000, which is here. Um, and you can just see that from the graph. Just by looking at it, you can start to see that it's starting to tail off. You would never want to cross this over in the 4,000 range because it's already dipping down. You're going to want to probably cross it ahead of that. So you're looking about 3,000 across this particular speaker. Once again, we just look at the 6,000, which is the peak. Have it, which is about 3,000. Um, pretty easy to see when you look at the graph as well. So you're going to need to you're going to need to at least cross it over by then. So from 3,000 on down, you can cross it over. Now we have to pick tweeters that would work with these types of woofers. So what's the rule of thumb with a tweeter? Um, with a tweeter, you're going to want to go to the web page and let me show you this date and audio first, actually. So here's a tweeter with the Dayton Audio, and as you scroll down, you're going to see something called FS, which stands for Resonant Frequency. Now, what this Resonant Frequency, um, a lot of people think that this is where you cross over a speaker. You can't. Okay, this is um, actually the, the frequency in which you should, if you're using a second order crossover, have at least double the resonant frequency. Now, some people are going to say even two and a half times, um, but you need at least double as a starting point. Now, that means the bare minimum of what you can cross this speaker over with. So, for example, this tweeter, the bare minimum would be 2,700 hertz that you would want to cross this over with. You might be able to even cross it over higher than that. Um, and if you go with the third or fourth order, you might even be able to cross it over lower. However, uh, just like we did before, we should look at this um, frequency chart just to double check um, where measurements are. And we want to check to see kind of where the uh, speaker starts to even out. So you see this huge hump here. Obviously, you can't uh, cross it over here um, because of that huge hump. Now, that would create distortion. We don't want that. Um, and then, then we have this hump going down. Probably not going to want to cross it over here, but it starts to really look good around you know 3200 which would be a great great place to cross it over it pretty much stays pretty even here and here's the 2700 mark which once again still looks good uh, part of this is, is playing and i hate to say it but it's trial and error because you might say well i'm going to try 2700 and if you get um, distortion on it when you actually build the speaker then you're going to want to cross it over higher um, and that's why we're telling you the bare minimum, meaning you can cross it over from 2,700 on up, right? So you could cross over at 5,000, and you'd be even better, or 6,000, or 4,000, any of those, those ranges, um, and you would have less of a chance of distortion. So this is a rule of thumb that you should follow. Let me show you on one more tweeter, uh, and I want to show you this tweeter uh, because I think that this is pretty powerful to show. Sorry about that. Some type of... Alright, so here's your FS on this. Your FS is right here. 589 hertz. Now, if we actually go to the web page, um, it actually shows it a little bit higher. It says 630. So, this one actually says that you can cross it over at 1250 hertz, or let's say a 1300 hertz, just to be safe. Uh, which 
I'm not sure that you actually can cross this over at 1300. Most people cross this tweeter over at 2500 as, as the lowest they cross it over. And that's why we take this as a rule of thumb. And uh, you can kind of see that because if you tried to cross over at 1300, it's still going up um, with that red line. So you're going to want to probably cross it over later if you can. But it says you can, um, by the rule of thumb, you can, you can do that. If you tried to do it that early, you're probably going to have some type of distortion. Uh, another thing that you can tell is with your curve, you want this to try to even out as well. So we're looking pretty good by 2000 for sure, and maybe a little before that. So that's how you try to figure out which speakers are going to be good. Now it looks like this particular speaker, uh, which is the, let's see, this is the Tiffany XT25BG6004 would work well with this Dayton audio, and this is the ND105-4. So I'm going to go ahead and import those speakers and we will create a crossover for those in the next project. So if you guys are following along and you want to pull those speakers in, we'll go ahead and show you how to create a basic crossover for that in the next video. Alright guys, thanks. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends, and as always, subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.